Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante of theCUBE. This is day two of Falcon 2022 CrowdStrike's big customer event. Over 2,000 people here, 100 sessions, a lot of deep security talk. Amal Kulkarni is here. He's the Chief Product and Engineering Officer at CrowdStrike, and we're going to get into it, Amal. Thanks for coming to theCUBE. Yeah, great to be here, Cliff. En enjoyed your, your keynote today. It was you know, very informative. Uh -huh. um, First of all, how's the show going for you? It's going fantastic. I mean, it, first and foremost, like to be having everyone here in person after three years, that's, that's just out of the world, right? So great to meet and a lot of great conversations across the board with customers, partners. It's been fantastic. Yeah, so I want to start with Cloud Native. It's, your, it's kind of your dogma. This whole, the new acronym is, is, is CNAP, uh, Cloud Native Application Protection platform, That's right. there's a mouthful. Yeah. What is that, how does it relate to what you guys are doing? Yeah, so, so CNAP is, is what uh, Gartner has coined as the term for covering entire cloud security. And they have, they have identified various components in it. Um, the first and foremost is the runtime protection, cloud workload protection as we call it. Second is posture management, that's CSPM, cloud security posture management. Third is CIEM, which we announced today. And then the fourth is shift left uh, kind of DevSecOps part of cloud security. And all together, Gartner coins that as a, a solution or a suite, if you will, to cover various aspects of cloud security. Okay, so shift left and then shield right. You still get a shield right. That's right. So right. Is that where network security comes in? Exactly. And, right, which is exactly. not your main focus, right. but, but oh, okay. So now I'll explain, now that I, I, Gartner is an acronym, now I yeah, get it. Yeah. Um, but but the, the, the CIEM uh -huh. um, announcement, cloud yeah. infrastructure entitlement yeah. management. Yeah. So you're managing uh, identities, is that right? That's right. Explain identities. that. So yeah, so uh, I mean, as, as in the on-premise world, but, but even more exacerbated in the cloud world, you have lots and lots of identities, both human identities and service accounts that are accessing cloud services. And a lot of the time the rigor is not there in terms of what permissions those identities are provisioned with. Right. So are they over provisioned? Do they have lots of rights that they should not have? Are, they able, are services able to connect to resources that they should not be able to connect to? Uh, that, all of that is falls under the entitlement management, the identity entitlement management part. And, and that's where CIEM comes in. So what we said is we, we have a great identity security story for on-premise. Right? And now we are applying that to understand identities, the entitlements they have, secrets that are lying around, maybe leaked or just, just uh, available for adversaries to exploit in the cloud security world. So taking all of that into account and giving you, uh, giving customers a, a snapshot view, of one single view to say, these are the identities, these are their permissions, this is where you, you can trim them down because these are the dependencies that are present across services, and you see something that's not right from a dependency perspective, you can say, okay, this connection doesn't make sense. There's something malicious going on here. So there's a lot that you can do by having that scope of identities be very narrowed down. It, it's a first step in the zero trust journey for the cloud infrastructure. So I have to ask you, when you now extend this conversation to the edge right. and operations technology, yeah. traditionally the, the infrastructure has been air-gapped mm -hmm. by, by you know, brute force, air-gap, don't worry about That's it. That's right. And maybe hasn't had to worry so much That's right. about the hygiene. Yeah. So now as, you, as the business drives and forces essentially digital, connect, digital transformation and connectivity, connectivity yeah. I mean, uh, wow, that's a playground uh, for the you, hackers. You, you absolutely nailed it. So most of these infrastructure was not designed with security in mind, unfortunately, yeah. right? As you said, most of it was air-gapped, disconnected, and now everything is getting to be connected because the updates are being pushed rapidly, uh, changes are happening. Uh, so, so, and, and that, that really, in, in some sense, has changed the, eco, the, the environment in which these devices are operating, the operational technology, industrial control, we, we had the colonial uh, pipeline breach last year. Right. And, and that, that really opened people's eyes. Like, hey, nation state adversaries are going to come after critical infrastructure. And that, can, that is going to cause impact directly to the end, end users, to the citizens. So we have to protect this infrastructure. And that's why we announced Discover for IoT as a new module that looks at and understands all the IoT and industrial control systems assets. 
So that didn't require an architectural change though, right? That was a capability that you introduced with partners, right? right. Um, am, am I right about that's that? Correct. You don't have to re-architect anything. No, it's just your correct. architecture fits perfectly into Absolutely. those scenarios, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. You, you actually, the, while the pace of change is there, architectural change is almost very difficult because these are very large systems. They are built up over time. You take an industrial control system, it, it, the iteration speed is very different from a laptop. So yeah, you can't impose any architectural change. It has to be seamless uh, from what the customers have. You were talking, I want to go back to CNAP. You were talking about the protecting the runtime. You can uh -huh. only do that with an agent. You had, you had said, agent in your keynote, agent, agentless solutions don't give you runtime security right. protection. Yeah. Uh, can you double click on that and absolutely. just elaborate? Yeah, absolutely. So what the agentless solutions today are doing, they are essentially tapping into APIs from AWS or Azure, CloudTrail for example, and looking at misconfigurations. So that, that is indeed a challenge, so that is one part of the story, but that only gives you a partial view. Um, let's, say that a cus let's say that an attacker attacks and, and uses a existing credential, uh, a legitimate credential, to access one of the cloud services. And from there they escalate the privileges and then now start branching off. The, the CSPM, the agentless only solutions will not catch that, oh. right? So what you need is, you, you need this agentless part, but you have to couple that with seeing the activity that's actually happening. The living of the land attacks, that cannot be caught by the CSPM piece. So you need a combination of agentless and agent runtime to give that overall protection. What's the indicator of attack uh -huh. for a uh, a hacker that's living off the land, meaning using your own tools against you. That's right. So, so the indicators of attack are saying, accessing services, for example, that are not normally accessed, or escalating privileges. So you, you, you come in as a normal user, but then suddenly you have admin privileges because you have escalated those privileges. Or you are moving laterally very rapidly from one place to another, or spraying across a lot of services in order to do reconnaissance and understand what is out there. So it's, it's almost like looking for what is an abnormal attack path, abnormal behavior, compared to what is normal. And, and the good part is cloud, there is a lot that is normal, right? It's fairly constrained. It's not like a, like a end user who is downloading stuff from the internet and, and like doing all sorts right. of things. Cloud services are fairly constrained. So you can profile and you can figure out where there is a drift from the normal, and that's really the indicator of attack in some sense from cloud services. In a previous life, I, I just want to change subjects on you. Yeah. In a previous life, I spent a lot of time with CIOs, uh -huh. uh, helping them look at their application portfolio, understanding what to rationalize, what to get rid of, right. what to invest in, you know, bringing in new projects, because uh -huh. you know, it's just, you never throw a stuff away in, no, in IT. No, but so, absolutely, yeah. right, so There is no obsolescence. It's, it's right? so right. Yeah, it's yeah. So, but they wanted to, anytime you go through these rationalization exercises, change management is everything, and That's one right. of the hardest things to do was to map and understand the business impact of all the dependencies absolutely. across the portfolio. Because app, application A needs this data set, and That's right. if, That's you, right. if you retire it, you're going yeah. it has, has yeah. ripple effects. And you yeah. talked about that mm -hmm. in a security context today when you were talking about the asset graph and the threat graphs giving you the ability to understand those right. dependencies. Yeah. Can you add some color to that? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so what we've done with the asset graph, it's a fundamental piece of technology that we've been building now for some time uh, that complements the threat graph. And the asset graph looks at assets, identities, applications, and configuration. All of those, all of those aspects. And the interconnections between them. So if a user is accessing an application on a server. All those, and, and in what role, all of that relationship is tied together in the asset graph. So what that does now is it gives you an ability to say this application connects to this application, um, and that's the dependency on that port, for example. Uh, so you, you can now build up a dependency map. And then the thread graph, what it does, it, it looks at the continuous activity that's happening. So if you now take the events that are coming into the threat graph and the graphical representation of those, combine it with the asset graph, you get that full dependency map. And now you can start doing that impact analysis that you talked about, which is, it's an unsolved problem, right? And, and that's why 
security, as I said in my keynote, is most people do not have their security tools enabled to the highest level, or they right. don't have full coverage. Just because that, that the pace of change is so rapid, they cannot keep up with it. So we want to enable change management at a rapid pace, where businesses and customers can say, we are confident about the change management, about the change we are going to implement, because we know what the potential impact could be. We can validate, test it in a smaller subset, and then roll it out quickly. And that's, that's the journey we are on, sort of, the, the theme of my talk was to make IT and security friends again. Uh, ah, right, you yeah. talked about that gap That's and bringing right. those two together. You also yeah. had a great quote in there, the pace of change in security is insane. Yes, yes. Um, and so this assets graph capability, the dependencies and the threat graph help you manage that accelerating pace of change. Absolutely. Um, before I forget, I want to ask you about your interview uh, with Girls Who Code. What was that like? Who'd you interview? Tell, I, I unfortunately couldn't see it, I apologize. Yeah, but. fantastic. So Reshma Saujani, she heads uh, uh, Girls Who Code, and uh, she first off had a very, very powerful talk, uh, just from her own, own experiences, uh, and, and essentially like, how, what do we need to do to get more women into computer science first, but then within that into cybersecurity, and, and what all ha have they done with, with girls who code. So very, very, I mean, we were very touched. Uh, the audience was like super, super into, into her talk. And then I had a chance to chat with her for a few minutes, ask her a few questions. Uh, just my, my view was more like, okay, hey, what can we do together? Um, what can CrowdStrike do in, in our position in to attract more women? Uh, we've, we've done a lot in terms of tailoring our job descriptions to make sure it's, it's more, it remove the biases. Uh, tuning the interview processes to, to be more welcoming and, um, and and Reshma gave an example saying, hey, many of these interviews, they start with a baseball discussion. And uh, I mean, some, some women may be, may be interested in it, but may, not all may be. And so is that the right, is, is it a gender kind of affirming or gender neutral uh, kind of discussion or do you want to have other topics? So a lot of that is about training the interviewers, because most of the interviewers are, are men, unfortunately, that, that's the mix we have. And uh, it, it, was, it was a great, great discussion. I mean, just like very practical. She's very much focused on increasing the number of people and increasing the pipeline, which is I, honestly the biggest problem. Because if we have a lot of candidates, we would definitely hire them and, and uh, essentially improve the diversity. Right. And, and we've done a great job with our intern program, for example. Which has, which has helped significantly improve the diversity on our workforce. And the, but the gap keeps getting bigger in terms yes. of unfulfilled yes. jobs. Um, that leads me to developers uh -huh. as a constituency because you guys are building the security cloud. You're on a mission to do that. And right. to me, if, if you have a security cloud, it's got to be programmable. You're going to have developers right. there. Right. You don't, from what I can tell, you have a specific developer platform, but, but, but it's organic. It's yes. sort of happening out there. Yeah. What's the strategy yeah. around, I mean, the developer today is so critical in terms of implementing a lot of security strategy and putting it into action. They've got to right. secure the runtime. They've right. they got to worry about the APIs. They've got to secure the paths. Right. They've got to secure the containers. That's right. right? And so, yeah. what's your developer strategy? Yeah, yeah. So, so within, within cloud security, um, em enabling developers to implement DevSecOps as a, as a philosophy, as a strategy is critical. And so we, we have a lot of offerings there on the shift left side. For example, you talked about securing containers. So we have container image assessment where uh, we, we plug in into the container repositories to check for vulnerabilities and uh, bad configuration in the container images. We, we then complement that with the runtime side where our agent can protect the container from runtime violations from breakouts, for example. Um, so so it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination, it's a, it's a full spectrum, right from the developer building an application all the way to the end. Second I'll say is, we are a very much an API first company. So all of the things that you can do from a user interface perspective, you can do from APIs. What has enabled that is a bunch of partners, a rich partner ecosystem that is building using those APIs. So the developers within our partners are leveraging those APIs to build very cool applications. And the, the manifestation of that is CrowdStrike Store, where essentially we, are, we have, as, as George mentioned in his keynotes, we have a agent cloud architecture that is very rich. And we said, okay, why can't we open that up for partners to enable them to leverage that architecture for their scenarios? So we have a lot of applications 
that are built on the CrowdStrike store leveraging our platform, right? Areas that we are not in, for example. Is, and I hear you describe it, is, is there a PaaS layer that's purpose built for so, CrowdStrike so that developers can that's build applications? That's a great question. So I'll say that we have, we have a, a beginnings of a PaaS layer. Yep. Uh, that we, we definitely talked about CrowdStrike store as being PaaS for cybersecurity, uh, but there's a lot more to do. And, and we, are we are in the process of building up an application platform so that customers can build the applications for their SOC workflow or IT workflow. And, and Falcon Fusion is a key part of that. So Falcon Fusion is our automation platform built right into the, into the security cloud. And what that enables customers to do is to define, encode their business process the way they want and leverage the platform the way they want. It seems like a logical next step, right. uh, because you're going to uh, enable a consistent experience mm -hmm. uh, across the board, right. uh, and and fulfill your promise, your right. brand promise, and the capabilities that you bring, and this ecosystem will explode yes. once you yes. announce that. And, and that's the that's <laughs> the notion we talk about of being the sales force of security. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah, that that's the next step. Yes. Amal, um, well, thank you so much. I got to run and wrap. We really appreciate you coming on the cube. And thank you very congratulations much. Congratulations on your keynote and all the success and a great event. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the time and right, great chatting with you. You're very welcome. All right, keep it right there. We'll be back very shortly to wrap up from Falcon, 20, Falcon 2022. This is Dave Vellante for the cube. Mm -hmm.